Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to the five worst man-made disasters. Now, you know, it's, I think nowadays humans, like we are trying to protect our environment a lot more than we did in the 20th century. We're trying to be a lot more green, you know, using a lot more renewables and, you know, stuff like that. We're trying to do less damage to the, to the climate and things. But I think just the very nature of our society, you know, like how we are constantly trying to sell products and stuff like that. You know, we are constantly in need of new materials and things like that. So I think no matter what, like we are going to do, you know, some damage to this planet. But, you know, there are certain things where, you know, catastrophes have happened. Like look at Chernobyl, you know, it was, you know, in, in, like it was a nuclear plant. So the, the, the thought behind it was good, you know, because nuclear power is very, very green. It's, uh, you know, in terms of the energy produced versus the carbon emitted, it's extremely low. I think, is it is it zero carbon? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But then you had the disaster and then you had all of the radiation leaking into the atmosphere, the countless people, you know, getting sick and dying and stuff like that. So, you know, there are certain things that happen in, in human history that are just complete and utter catastrophes that, you know, are complete accidents too. So yeah, this video should be quite interesting to see, you know, what else makes this list. I'm pretty sure Chernobyl will make this list just because, you know, I think even now you can't grow any crops in that area. Like the land is just completely just like dead in a way. So yeah, I'm sure Chernobyl will make this list, but let's see what else makes the list. Let's do it. There are a lot of things that happen on this planet that are simply out of our control. Try as we might to dominate everything around us. At the end of the day, we are constantly at the mercy of natural disasters. But not all disasters are the fault of nature. In fact, some of the most devastating disasters are simply the fault of human error and negligence. Had a little more care been taken, many of these catastrophes could have been avoided. From oil spills to chemical factories, here are five of the worst man-made disasters in human history. All right. The Deepwater Horizon was a decade-old semi-submersible drilling rig that was stationed in the Gulf of Mexico. The purpose of this structure was to drill an exploratory well over 18,000 feet below sea level. Wow. It was a fairly standard operation that was running successfully for many years. However, everything took a turn for the worst on April 20th, 2010. At 9.45 p.m. Central Time, a burst of water erupted from the marine riser and onto the rig. This was followed by a combination of mud, water, and worst of all, methane gas. Oh, it wasn't long after because the methane is flammable, right? This that the methane gas caught oh, fire and exploded. Man. During all of this, 126 crew members were on board. They oh, immediately God. knew something was wrong because they could feel two strong vibrations and the electric lights on board began to flicker. The crew members had less than five minutes to oh evacuate the structure. Out of the 126 people on board, 11 individuals lost their lives. Oh By the time God. April 22nd came around, the entire rig had sunk into the sea. This was also the date in which the Coast Guard discovered that oil continued to leak from the rig at a rate of roughly 8,000 barrels per day. Oh, Two remote operated man. underwater vessels were sent to try to cap the well, but those efforts proved to be unsuccessful. Oh my god, look at all of it just completely just contaminating the water. Damn. Next, BP tried to place a 280,000 pound containment dome over the leak. While it is a technique that's useful in shallow water, it too failed here. It wasn't until July 15th, almost three months after the initial incident, that the well was finally closed and the leak stopped. May, how many animals probably died as a result of this? All like fish, you know, birds that like live near these areas. An investigation into the incident soon followed. In June of 2010, the House Committee on Energy and Commerce said that BP should have used cement at the well. It would have cost the company $128,000 and would have taken between 8 and 12 hours to complete. 
A more thorough investigation found that six different operations, equipment functions, and tests ultimately led to the blowout in the 32 hours preceding the explosion. In July of 2015, BP agreed to pay $18.7 billion in fines, making it the biggest corporate settlement in the history of the United States. Whew. I mean, yeah, that was just so $120,000 like that would have avoided this potentially yet they had to spend 20 billion on uh, settlement like there's a massive lesson to be learned there just do things properly on the night spanning december 2nd and 3rd 1984 one of the worst industrial disasters in the history of the world took place it was on that evening an accident occurred at the Union Carbide Pesticide Plant located in Bhopal, India. This event released a minimum of 30 tons of an incredibly toxic gas known as methyl isocyanate, in addition to numerous other poisonous gases into the local environment. Sadly, many shanty towns were located in the immediate vicinity of the plant. In total, over 600,000 people were exposed to a deadly cloud of gas that oh night. These particular gases tend to remain fairly low to the ground. Countless people reported feeling nauseous and that their eyes and throats began to burn. And unfortunately, many people lost their lives in the aftermath. Estimates of the gas leak's death toll range from 3,800 to 16,000 and many people still suffer physical and emotional scars from that night. However, much of the health data related to the incident is still not available. The Indian Why? Council of Medical Research was forbidden from publishing data in regards to the gas leak until 1984. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, I hope that the people, like, filed an absolutely gargantuan class action lawsuit against this company. The disaster occurred as a result of water entering a tank filled with methyl isocyanate. This led to a chemical reaction causing the temperature inside the tank to reach over 392 degrees Fahrenheit. There are two main arguments as to why this happened. The first is that the Union Carbide India Limited chemical plant was already in very poor condition, was under-maintained, and had broken dozens of safety regulations prior to this incident. Shocking. The other side of the argument is that it is not physically possible for water to have entered the tank on its own and that human effort had to have played a role. Criminal and civil cases were filed in the United States against UCC and Warren Anderson, who was the CEO of the company at the time of the disaster. However, these cases were repeatedly redirected and dismissed to Indian courts several times from 1986 to 2012. As of 2018, efforts to clean up the area remain stagnant. What a joke. What a complete joke. That's, I mean, I know life isn't fair, but that is just ridiculous. So to this day, the company hasn't been held account accountable, really, in any way. That's a, that's a joke. Chemical plant explosions happen all over the world, like this one that occurred at a Texas chemical plant back in 2013. But one of, if not the worst to ever happen, was the Jilin chemical plant explosion. The Jilin chemical explosion actually consists of a series of blasts that took place on November 13, 2005, in Jilin City, China. Over the period of a single hour, numerous explosions occurred at the number 101 petrochemical plant that resulted in six deaths and dozens of injuries. Two days after the explosions, it was determined that the accident site had a nitration unit for aniline equipment. One tower was jammed up and not handled properly, which ultimately led to the explosions. These blasts were so powerful that they completely shattered windows that were at least 650 feet away. Wow. Fires built up from the blasts that were not put out until the following day. More than 10,000 individuals had to be evacuated out of fear that more explosions could have been imminent. While initial reports thought that the explosion could have occurred as a result of terrorism, the company stated that it was a result of a chemical blockage that had not been fixed. The fallout from the explosions At least they were honest. lasted more than just that day. 
It significantly polluted the nearby Songhua River. An estimated 100 tons of pollutants, including nitrobenzene and benzene, entered the river. Exposure to benzene has been linked with leukemia and oh reduced God. red blood cell counts. The contaminants gradually flowed into the Strait of Tartary and oh then, eventually, God. into the Sea of Japan. The effects of the explosion also made their way to Russia. On December what? 16th of that year- Mate, tell me this company has been, like, held accountable for this. Because the number of people affected by this is probably in the many, many, many thousands. Year, the toxic slick that had entered the water arrived in the city of Khabarovsk. Granted, the slick was severely diluted by this point, but, but still, Russia prepared by digging extra wells and storing clean water before the slick reached the city. Oh, mate, I wish they told us what happened. Uh, some of these companies, I just feel like, you know, they shouldn't even exist anymore. Like, such was the gravity of the mistake. You know, maybe I guess if they pay huge huge restitution but even then if you if you've got family that have, that's died as a result of this like no amount of money is going to bring that family member back the great smog of 1952 refers to a significant air pollution event that overtook the city of london in early december of 1952. it was marked by a period of unusually cold weather including windless and anti-cyclone conditions. However, those factors didn't create the event all their own, or else this entry wouldn't make it on the list of man-made disasters. Much of the smog was due to collected airborne pollutants, mostly due to the city's heavy reliance on coal. While there had been smog events in the past, nothing was on the same scale as this. It resulted in a huge disruption by limiting people's visibility. The smog even made its way into indoor areas. Government reports that were made in the weeks that followed found that nearly 4,000 people died as a result of the smog, while an additional 100,000 people suffered illnesses. It was the worst smog event in the country's history. So much so that it led to many changes in regulations and practices. The most important item to come out of this event is the Clean Air Act of 1956 which introduced numerous measures to severely limit air pollution in the area. There were mandates calling for smokeless fuels, particularly in high population regions. The which is, you know, what really should happen. Like, if you can have, you know, these sort of things, like, if you know there's a lot of people, a dense population nearby, and you can avoid having them inhale these awful fumes and smoke, absolutely you should do that. The bill has under... If, I would be shocked if Chernobyl is not the last entry on this list, by the way. I've been waiting for it like all this time. It's got to be. ...gone modifications over the years, as well as a full repeal when the Clean Air Act came into effect in 1993. Luckily, nothing like London's Great Smog has occurred since. <sighs> Thank goodness. It's got to be Chernobyl, surely. Let's see. The Minamata disaster has one of the most ominous openings wow. out of any man-made disaster I guess ever. Not. In the mid-1950s, people in the small Japanese town of Minamata began to notice cats going crazy and falling into the sea. Many believed the cats were intentionally committing suicide. However, the ailment that afflicted the cats soon made its way to people. Residents reported feeling numb in the lips and limbs. Many began to have problems seeing or hearing, and just like the cats, many people appeared to be going crazy and shouting uncontrollably. Something was affecting their nervous systems. It took until July of 1959 for the source of these ailments to be located. It all came down to people developing high levels of mercury poisoning, which has since been named Minamata disease. The immediate attention turned to a huge petrochemical plant run by the Chiso Corporation that was dumping large amounts of mercury into the Minamata Bay. What? They were just dumping it there? Jeez, man, we got some psychos in, in control of these big companies. When the fishermen protested the Chiso Corporation, the corporation made people sign deals. These documents stated that the company would compensate individuals for their illnesses, but they would not accept any present or future liability. A lot of townspeople, assuming this would be the only way to receive any amount of compensation, signed the paperwork. It took until 1968 for Chiso to stop poisoning the waters around Minamata. 
In 2004, Japan's Supreme Court ordered the government to pay 71.5 million yen, which comes out to about 703,000 American dollars. Not enough. Nowhere near enough. To the disease victims of Minamata. In 2010, Chiso was ordered to pay an additional 2.1 million yen in monthly medical allowances for those still suffering. All those decades later, and that small town still feels the impact of one company's negligence. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to Crazy. click the link on screen to check out our video about- Really, really surprised that we've not seen uh, Chernobyl on this list. Like, because I think in terms of death toll, it's probably the number one. Maybe I'm guessing they've had, they've made, this channel has made a similar video where Chernobyl's already featured on this list. But yeah, it's just, it just saddens me that, you know, humans can deliberately make decisions that they know down the line are gonna affect a lot of people just for the sake of saving some money. I mean, don't they realize that, which they, like, this is the thing that confuses me. Like, you know that this is gonna happen or you, there's a good chance that a disaster will happen and you'll be financially penalized for that. Why would you not just spend the money to try and avoid it from happening? It just makes, like, it's just a simple decision to me, but I guess there must be other reasons at play. Maybe it's a lot harder to do the, the right thing, I guess, for them. I don't know, but very, very interesting video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.